What's up, guys? It's your girl, Megan Rogers, and... Linda Marcus Smith. And we are Sassy Broad Squad. Woo! We are sassy. Yes, we are. Right here in downtown Portland at Harvey's Comedy Club Corner Office Bar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful downtown Portland today. It's actually a nice day. Yeah. Too. I... Do you think that Portlanders do not know how to handle sunlight, though? Absolutely. But well, maybe we already had the first day of sun, because mm-hmm. I remember the first day of sun, and I was driving up here, and traffic was awful. People were just acting crazy. They are. Yeah. They do, every time. Yeah. But I think, you know, they're starting to get used to it. Like, what's that big fireball in the sky? Oh, it's the sun. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, not bad. Um I do think it's funny that you guys think it gets hot here, though, because <laughs> Texas, <laughs> it can feel like you're crawled up Satan shorts <laughs> when you're in Texas, right there with his ball sweat and everything. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's why they say that everything's bigger in Texas, even the sun. The sun is bigger, <laughs> the barbecue's bigger, <laughs> the tornadoes are bigger, the burritos are bigger. The bears are bigger. <laughs> so are those cute Texas boys. Hi. <laughs> Hi, y'all. <laughs> okay. So, shameless plug time. Woo! Menu. Mm-hmm. So, here at Carvey's Corner Office Bar. Well, we got burgers. And we got grilled sandwiches. Uh, French dip. Garden burger. Prime rib. Can't have. Definitely got some uh, <laughs> salmon. Chicken piccata, mm. fish and chips, mm. and then appetizers. We've got hummus, chips and salsa, mozzarella cheese sticks, nachos grande, <laughs> chicken tenders, <laughs> a combo platter that has chicken strips, fries, mozzarella sticks, and garden veggies. Mm. They're free range too. They've lived a very cruelty free life. <laughs> Spicy curly fries, regular fries. And they've got soups and salad, tomato, basil, bisque, Caesar salad, and a Cobb salad. That sounds so good. I want one of everything. I do, too. It's pretty good. Full bar here. Mm -hmm. Um, On the corner of Gleason and Six, right across the street from the Greyhound bus station, uh, Union Square station? Union Station, yes. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Who knew I could... I could learn, be learned up. <laughs> she travels from Albany every week, folks. Give it up for her, Megan Rogers. Thank you. Woo! So, yeah, here at the bar, we have the ketchup that's upside down. Ooh, you know? for easy yeah. dispensing. Yeah, but then our Tabasco comes in Christmas colors, <laughs> <laughs> and it's upside right. So get on down. Yeah. <laughs> get in that Megan voice. Get on down. Come on, on down here. <laughs> Y'all come back now here. <laughs> so who do we got headlining? This particular week at Harvey's Comedy Club for seven shows starting tonight, we have the amazing George Lopez. No, I lied. I said the wrong name. Excuse me one second while I get the last name correct. George Perez. How could I say Lopez? I'm a fan of both of them. Wait until you hear about George Perez. Oh, my gosh. He has been a comic book writer. Really? Yes, the Avengers and Wonder Woman. He's done that. And nice. comedy and acting. And, oh, my God. He's, he does everything. He does it all. He does it all. Yes. I think he might just do more than George Lopez. Maybe. <laughs> you know? You never know. It's a rough world out there. It I'm is. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jason Acevedo, he's from, uh, and I could have butchered that name, totally said the right name, but pronounced it wrong. Who knows? Was it Acevedo, maybe? Could be, yeah. You know? And then we have also the Latin Comedy Festival. On May 5th? Yes. Cinco, Cinco de, Mayo. de Mayo. Yes, one of our own people will be on that featured, Matt Gwynn. Oh, yeah. Go, Matt, go! We love it when our people... This week, Danny Zamudio, a female comic from over at Helium. She works there and does a lot of the mics and shows. Ooh, we got a, I think we've got a phone call. Awesome. It's either... Oh. I bet it's... Oh, we, ha- we missed a call. So let's call him back. Okay. It's either Robin, Corey and Jess, or Kevin. Make sure it's turned up. Yeah. Corey here. Hello? Hi, Corey. Hi. We can't hear you. Is this Corey and Jess? 
Yes. Hey. Hi, Hi Corey Brunish and Jessica Rose Brunish. How are you two? I'm very fine. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful, Corey. <laughs> this is my co-host, the beautiful Megan Rogers. Thank you. The camera's a little too close so you can see all of my flaws and imperfections. <laughs> we're both female veterans. <laughs> and so we're doing Sassy Broad Squad podcast because we're sassy. So we wanted you to call in because you're a legend in Portland and New York City. So now's your chance oh, to plug sure. you guys. Yes, please. Shameless plugs all the way. Do you want to start? <laughs> do you want to start in, or do you want me to start it off, jo you guys? Oh, you go right ahead. Okay, go into it. I am proud to know Corey Brunish and his wife Jessica Rose Brunish. Um, Corey grew up in Portland and went to Madison High Marshall High School. Marshall. What high school? Corey? Um, I went to high school in Beverly Hills, California. Nice. Had that wrong. So, um, yeah. And so now you put on the Portland Area Music and Theater Awards yearly. And you host Correct. them, co-host them with Darius Pierce, who uh, if he ever started doing comedy in Portland, everybody else would leave because he's that funny. And... <laughs> Yeah, and you have created a path at the Keller Auditorium inside the theater you own, the Brunish Theater. You've created a path for local actors and actresses to get to Broadway in New York City, where you're a producer for numerous shows. Wow. On Broadway. Hamilton? I think you were... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, that sounds all lovely and dandy, but you went to school in Beverly Hills. Did you go with, like, the Kardashians? How about Charlie oh, yeah, Sheen? yeah, the Kardashians and I hung out a lot. I, I knew it! <laughs> I just knew it! So you and Jessica uh, got married and are expecting a baby. Aww. We love Jessica. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited about you two being married and having a kid and those shows you produce. They go around the world and find shows and sp start producing them. Nice. Yeah. And so they brought great ones. So what are you doing now? Are you just waiting for the baby to pop? <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on Tuesday, we had the opening night of our latest venture, which is called Tootsie. Oh, I love Tootsie. Yeah, me too. We got quite good reviews, and uh, we just got nominated for uh, 11 awards today, and there were 10 awards yesterday. And Nice. And, uh, so we're, uh, we're thrilled. So who's, um, who's the person playing Tootsie? Dustin Hoffman? His name, his name is uh, uh, Santino Fontana. He's extremely talented. Nice. And he's from Washington he's from Washington State actually. Really? That's awesome. He's got a cool name, Santino. I know. I know. We'll have to look him up. Is he sexy? Oh yes, very much. He uh his wife certainly thinks so. And <laughs> oh well then never mind. Enough. I'm and sorry, the, Santino's and the, wife. And the name, <laughs> her name is also Jessica. But huh. Santino actually keeps a list of all the different um, mispronunciations of his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Uh, my name is simple and generic. It's Megan, and it's spelled M-E-G-A-N, and people still mess it up, and they're like, Megan? I'm like, yep, that's me. <laughs> Vegan Megan. <laughs> Vegan Megan. Sometimes they sneak an H in there, don't they? They do. They sneak an H. They've snuck in some I's, a Y. I'm like, sure. I wish I was that fancy. But my parents were like, we need something that's easy to remember. <laughs> you know, because I was born in the 70s, so they were smoking weed. They're like, I don't want something too complicated. <laughs> so here I am. Some, some people have known me for years still spell my name without the E, C-O-R-Y. Oh, my C gosh. I thought, I think and that might be the feminine Right, C O R Y, and then the E Y is. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I knew a set but of it twins. It doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it doesn't upset me in the least. I couldn't care less. <laughs> because I don't know how to spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like that too. I really, I'm like sure. So, what's the greatest 
thing that you've done as far as getting local Portland talent to New York that you're so proud of? That's what, you know, like the PAMPTA people <coughs> that have made it to New York. I'm kind of curious about that. And then I want to hear Jessica about expecting a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is everybody okay? Yes. She likes oh, you to heard cough. That? Oh, man, <laughs> I was like even trying to go to a scene where I'm not in the camera and I'm holding the microphone away from my face so I can hack up a hairball and yeah, I have allergies and I refuse to jam the flonies up my nose and inhale it because I'm, I don't know, I'm just weird. <laughs> but anyway, back to Jessica and you. Yeah, tell us about a success story, how you got somebody from Portland, music and theater, to New York, Broadway. Mm -hmm. I want to hear one of those stories. Well, you know, we, we uh, as often as we Nobody. can, we will, we will present uh, a Portland talent to be auditioned for Broadway. And we've been at this for about seven years now. We currently have eight shows running in New York, and which is about 25% of the market. And uh, we have five shows running um, overseas and four shows that are touring. And we have another dozen or so in development. But we're always trying to get uh, Portland talent on Broadway. And it hasn't happened yet, but we have had them uh, audition. And, and so, and we are in our 12th year of the Portland area musical theater awards nice and that that is something that uh we're we're very much devoted to not only because it recognizes singers and actors and dancers and musicians but also young actors who are the stars of tomorrow so to do that for 12 years is something that it takes a lot of time and a lot of devotion right uh, because we have to see all the shows there's about 35 shows every year in Portland. There's about 35 shows every year on Broadway. And then we're always seeing readings and going to London and going to regional theaters around the U.S. to find the next show. And that's how we, we found all our shows. Um, the, the, we, Beautiful is in its fifth year on Broadway. Uh, Come From Away has five companies globally. And now Tootsie looks like it's on track to be uh, a very successful brand new show nice. we're also involved in in fear of enhancing and in a a new play called network and, and we're very proud of of the new shows that we bring out like the band's visit and uh also old shows like hello dolly oh you know that newcomer that starts you know that newcomer that starred in it, that Betty Meidler? Have you heard of her? <laughs> <laughs> I have. I thought, I thought Hello Dolly, I thought that was uh, Barbara Streisand and Walter Matthau. Yeah, that was the movie. Oh, okay. They're Broadway. I don't know anything. I'm not yeah, cultured. Broadway. I'm kind of trashy. I grew up in Riverside, <laughs> you know, so I was like, Beverly Hills, man, that's some... Hot class people. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of us Riverside came from Portland. <laughs> What's that? Riverside, Riverside is a perfectly good place to be from. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, if you want to be Ronda Rousey, UFC, <laughs> she's, she grew up in Riverside. I'm like, why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> we had Tanya Harding. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, she's kind of dangerous. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> So Jessica, you're in the background. Jessica's here. She's I listening. I am. <laughs> yes. I so, usually let him do the talking. I know. I smile. Aww. <laughs> but you're like his right hand person. You're in this just as deep as he is, aren't you? Finding talent and promoting it. Yes, we do it together. We have a good time. I'm the um, business part. He's the show part. So yes. I'm the CPA. Got it. Got it. Where did you grow up? Yeah, but I grew up in Brooklyn, actually. Brooklyn, Ooh, New York. No way. That's awesome. What neighborhood? I think they call it boroughs. Um, it's, no, it's a neighborhood inside Midwood. of that borough. Oh. What? what? Midwood. I don't know that one. I know nothing about it's New York. Of, it's pretty small. It's pretty small um, neighborhood, but um, very suburban. Okay. 
I lived in Bensonhurst for a year. So, nice. So that's... Oh, yeah. So it's right near Bensonhurst. No way. Which yeah. direction? Which direction? Which <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We're neighbors. Uh, Google it. <laughs> right? We're neighbors. You're probably like a 15-minute walk from, from Bensonhurst. Okay. Perfect. That's where Midwood is. So you're How expecting funny. a baby. How far along are you? Is it like ready? Are you just ready to pop? I'm or? 25 weeks. No, 25 weeks. So I still have about um, 16 weeks to go. Okay. I'm like, don't give me weeks. I, I can't do math. I'm like, mm, oh, okay. yeah, I'm like smiling, so nodding, got, like, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I've got three and a half months to go. Oh, wonderful. So you're in that fun um, part of being pregnant. Because my sister, yes. she squeezed out a couple of kids too. And <laughs> she's like, towards the end, that's like the very beginning of being pregnant. It sucks because you're barfing and you know, you feel weird. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then like towards the end, you're just so huge and bloated and you're like, just, just come out, baby. I'm, I'm done with this. So enjoy, <laughs> yeah. enjoy it. Do you yeah, know not at that part yet? <laughs> Are you going to find I'm out? Still, I'm still just enjoying it's cool. actually, we already know the sex. It's a girl. <gasps> oh, gosh. Do you have a name? Congratulations. Do you Thank have a... you. We're really excited. Do you have a name picked out? We do. We're not we telling. We can message you it privately. We yeah, don't. yeah. We're no, I get it. We're not too much yet. Right. That's so sweet of you. Yeah. Thank you. That is so... Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. So, the best. The, doc the doctor the other day said, so you're right on target. You've gained your 15 pounds. Very good. And I said, hey, I've gained 20. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing his part. I heard, I heard that happens. Uh, it does. Yeah, my friend, she told me, like, when you, you the baby's, like, pushing up on your stomach, so you're hungry all the time. And, like, you can't finish your food. Oh, yeah. So you give it to your husband, and then he eats the rest of it. And then, so he's kind of pregnant, too. <laughs> Well, I'm going to I'm going to bring I'm going to bring Megan with me so she can see the Pamto Awards cuz it's one of the best nights in all of Portland when they give out those awards and oh, you you and Darius you. hosting and you're so funny and you give out presents too for trivia. Do, Holy Toledo. Do I have to wear a dress? No. Oh, sh no. <laughs> I was like I think I have a migraine that day. I don't want to wear a dress yeah, it's or awesome. high heels. <laughs> I have one but I don't want to wear it. I'll wear two. Oh, good. <laughs> so um, tell us when the dates are for the PAMTAs and some things in Portland that if people who are listening in, like her mother and my mother, <laughs> go to New York. Hi, Mama. If they go to New York, what, tell them a couple shows that are yours that you've backed. Oh, yeah. Tell us what we need to see in New York, yeah. especially for people like me that have never been. We have to go to New York. Yeah. So well, New York is that big island on the East Coast. Okay, <laughs> I'm tracking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, New York City is made up of five boroughs. There's the Bronx, and then there's Queens, and then there's Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Staten Island. Got it. And Long Long Island is not a borough, but Manhattan is referred to as New York City, even though it's five boroughs. And then, of course, the state is actually rather large. But everything, there's so many people who live on Manhattan. It's amazing it hasn't fallen into the sea. Really? There's nine million people. Nine million people live here. And the workforce, which comes from the outer boroughs, adds another nine million during the workday. Oh, my gosh. At so, any given moment, there's 18 million people on the island. And it's only 13 miles long and two miles wide. Which is why the skyscraper was invented. <laughs> Dang. Imagine all those people. Imagine if the zombie apocalypse happened with all those people. You'd be toast. <laughs> you should run. Well, we, we know where to hide. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Good, yeah, good. We have, we have a hiding spot all picked out. The bug out, oh, bug out location? Yeah. With your bug out bags? Yeah, yeah. Plus, <laughs> yeah. Plus we have a, an anti-zombie weapon, so it's... I like this guy. Right I'm yeah. I told you he can banter. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So anyway, the Panthers are on June third, you guys, at seven o'clock at the Winning Stad at the Arts Center, and it's at free admission, and you don't even need a ticket. 
We have 300 seats and we basically fill almost all of them every year. And, uh, and you I'm don't going. even have to be in a show. You don't have to be in a show. You don't have to be nominated. You just show up. Nice. And I don't and have we to have wear a, a dress. We have a, and you don't have to. You don't have to wear anything. I, I can come I naked? I never, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. You're going to win a present I for something other than trivia. <laughs> No, I won't. I won't do that to anybody. That that would just be cruel. <laughs> um, and there's a free photo booth. And, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, and of course the bar is open after the show, which lasts about two hours, maybe two fifteen. But um, look, the best shows on Broadway right now, um, which might happen to also be ours. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I agree. There's a chance. I agree. Are uh, beautiful. Ooh. Come from away. Mm. Tootsie, Network, and Dear Evan Hansen. And then off-Broadway, there's a very funny show that we moved from Broadway. We actually moved it from London to Broadway to off-Broadway. It's called The Play That Goes Wrong. Yeah. And it's extremely funny. And then also off-Broadway, we have a show called Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish. What? I want to go. How long will that be running? Oh, forever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about, and do you guys have like a, a pamphlet that I can read along if I don't speak Yiddish? I mean, I know what schmuck means. <laughs> no, putz, putz. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Actually, there are there are subtitles on the oh. other side of the stage. Oh, good, 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 good. Because I'm yeah. like, when are they going to say schmuck or schlemiel, <laughs> schlemazel? <laughs> 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 and you don't have to wear a dress to that one either. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I, can, I just can't. <laughs> you guys are awesome for calling in and taking your time. Yeah. Where can we find... Do you have social media and websites and all that good stuff? How do we find you for uh, shows oh, yes, and upcoming events and sh another shameless plug time? Oh, well, you're very sweet. Um I'm on Facebook, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and and so are the Panthers. It's, they yeah. have their own pa Facebook page. Wow. Nice. They're almost alive. <laughs> <laughs> like real people. <laughs> no catfish almost, here. Yeah. And um, we can find your, so on your Facebook page, we can find your website. Or how yeah, do we get tickets to your shows? Or do we need to go to the venue to get tickets? Um, or can we order in advance, like if we were traveling? Right. So literally, you can get a show to any broad, a ticket to any Broadway show just by looking up the title online. Okay. It'll take you to the website, and that will get you a ticket. Some of the best ways to get tickets are the day of show because they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Mm. Um, yeah. And if they're not sold out. If they're not sold out, and so you can you can literally. There's 41 theaters, and you can walk to all of them easily. Um, so you, you can literally start an hour ahead of curtain, and you can have your pick of many, many shows. So you can buy them in advance. You can buy them at the box office. And, uh, and sometimes you get a slightly better deal the later in the day it is. Wonderful. I think I'd want to buy in advance. I don't want to take the chance that they're going to be sold out. Because, I, I mean, I've never been to New York or New York City, but... Everything that I've seen in movies and TV, it's like, oh, it's so hard to find a, a Broadway show, and they're sold out, and dee dee dee. And I'm like, uh-uh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Well, I think that's probably the best formula then. Okay, I'm gonna pre-order. Have, have it in your, yeah, have it in your pocket. Yep, I'm gonna do it. Yep. I'm lucky to know where cool. my pocket is. <laughs> That's why you don't wear dress. You wear dresses. That's why you don't have pockets. See, I always have pockets. <laughs> I'm always wearing a pair of jeans. <laughs> Stick that in my front pocket so that I don't get pickpocketed on the subway. Well, thanks for letting me uh, screw up the city you were raised in. <laughs> I could have swore it was Madison High School, Portland, Ori. What do I know? <laughs> I like to think everybody well, is from guys. Riverside. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. We love you. We'll be at the Pamptas. It was Thank fun. You. Thank was so you. Fun. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All right. One down. No, actually, two down. Two and a half. 
Two and a half. Two and a half down. You're Who having a baby girl. Rob, That's so sweet. I, I gotta know. turn, Linda. I know you can't hear anything, but this has blown out my eardrum. I don't blame you a <laughs> bit. I don't want to blow out any eardrums. No. Well, I because I saw you like pushing, and I was like, she can't hear it. But I mean, the phone is kind of low. Yeah, I might yeah. be deaf because like I don't think you you're know. deaf. No, I mean it's just I can't see anything. And I can't hear anything either. I think just the older we get, you know, it's like, huh? <laughs> oh, maybe that little old lady, huh? What did you say? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Portland. But... This is Portland. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? We might get a call from Robin Siegel Lake in New York, actress and comic. Nice. She just tried out for Tootsie. So, Corey, if you're listening, nice. Robin Siegel Lake and and Kevin Davis down in California, he's, he goes, he bills himself as the Marine of Comedy. Okay. And I told them both if they call in and it goes to voicemail, we'll mm -hmm. call them back. The Marine of Comedy. So did he, well, I guess we should save that for, well, we could talk about we it. We could talk about yeah, it Yeah, so like, did he go overseas and um, entertain the troops? Not yet. And that's his goal. Oh, okay. He really badly wants to be in a USO tour. Yeah. And I was like, there's people that are comics that already do that. Mm -hmm. Go tell them. You right, know, right. They'll see to it. So he, it hasn't yet happened for him for whatever reason. But he's all over California. He goes like Chicago, New York, doing comedy. And he's a headliner all over nice. like, the Central and East Coast. So, mm. And I met him my first week in comedy at Ace's Comedy Club when we were both on stage the first time together. Nice. Doing mics. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so proud of him because... Him and Cynthia Rudd that called in, and she's going to be at the Apollo uh -huh. this particular weekend. Right. They both have just worked their way up in the last six years, just killing it they in California. They should come to Harvey's. I know it. Like, wouldn't that be great if one of them was the headline or a double headliner situation? Yeah, kind of like what, because I saw it, there's George. Art King and Susan Rice is May 2nd through May 4th. I know if you guys are, like, watching or listening there's a little TV back there that shows who's going to be here. I was like, got to wait. Yes. Got to wait for it. I know I should know all these things, but I'm not as studious as Linda is. Yeah, but I say the names all wrong. And, and I screw up what city they went to high school in. <laughs> you know, no, it's... Um, I went to high school with Carrie Hart. Wow. Pink's husband. I could have swore he was in the same grade as me, but he was a year older. I know how that goes. Yeah, and I was like, I swear to God, we had a math class together, you know, and... Uh, Not even. No. Huh. Maybe I imagined it. Maybe I wanted it to be, you know, because I had no clue that I went to high school with them until I, like, uh, reconnected with some people I went to high school with, and they were like, yeah, Carrie Hart went here. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> 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 I don't know him. They're like, you know, Pink's husband. I'm like, not really. Nah, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I sure as shit. I looked at my yearbook. I'm like, oh, there's his mug. <laughs> yeah. So I went to high school with um, <gasps> Sam Elliott, Lindsay Wagner. Lindsay Wagner. The bionic woman. Yeah. Yeah. I went to high school with him. Sam Elliott never knew him, but a guy I dated was good friends with him. Pfft, whatever that means. Nothing. Was he nice? Yes. And yeah. So here's what Sam Al Elliott did the last week of high school. He loaded up his El Camino wagon, put all his possessions in the back. Yeah. Came around and said goodbye to all the people in the neighborhood that he knew, oh. you know, hung out with. Yeah. And said, "I'm going to, I'm going to L.A. and I'm going to become famous. You just watch. I'm be a big old movie star with my big old mustache." Yeah. He did, didn't he? He did it. I, I saw him recently on uh, that Frankie and Johnny. Oh not Frankie gosh. and Johnny. Frankie with uh, Jane Fonda and Li Lily Tomlin. Yeah. Yeah. I love that show. She played one of the love interests. Ooh. I love that show, too. I love it. Oh, Frankie it. and Grace. Frankie and Grace. Yes. It is. I should know that. My sister's name is Grace. And <laughs> I just had a brain I get fart. those. <laughs> I get those. Yeah. They're free. Brain farts are free. They are free and they happen frequently. Yeah. I do miss like, I'm so bad with names now and I, I, I think I'm starting to get bad with faces because when <laughs> I was young, steel trap, it would just be stuck in there 
tell me your name once and I Done. remember. Yeah. Now I'm like, I have to meet people a few times before I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then I have to meet them many times to remember their nut. To remember their name, but then I don't want to ask because I don't want to seem like an asshole being exactly. like, I don't know your name. What's your uh -uh. name again? You, uh -uh. They're like, my name is Mud. <laughs> M-U-D. I was sitting here last night and a comic was sitting at one of the bar stools and he said, um, you're going to have me on your podcast, right? And I'm like, you realize you're catching me off guard? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was having a bummer of a night. Certain things were not going my way. And he's like, oh, you know, you're going to have me on your podcast, right? And I'm like, you know, like, no. And who are you? And he was like, oh, you don't know my name? And I'm like, uh, uh, no, I don't know your name. You caught me totally. How about, hello, my name is Jim. You might not remember me. What happened yeah, yeah, to those yeah. days? <laughs> uh, I don't, I think it's because they're young and they instantly remember each other's names yeah. and we're old. Exactly. So I always say, yeah, yeah. you know, just contact me because I, I get offended when people don't remember me. I'm like, oh, I'm so that forgettable. <laughs> exactly. But then, so I get it. I do. I yeah. do get it. I just like to like, you know, you know, that comic. Whoever you are, you talk to Linda, just message us. We'll get you on the podcast. And then Kirk Broussard, Broussard, he got a hold of me. He's with Tycoon 17 LLC. He was sitting at over there, mm -hmm. and he said, I want to be on your podcast, too. I'm the one putting on Cinco de Mayo. Ooh, fun. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Call in or come in. Well, I was, is he going to be here for Cinco de Mayo? Yes. Well, I was thinking it's just. not a Thursday, so should we make it an extra day? I was going to make it an extra day just because I, uh, I like Latin comic. Eh, that sounds kind of white girlish. And I don't want to be like, I'm so white that I uh, support marginalized communities. You know, I don't want to be yeah. that person, but I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I love, you know, I, I am a supporter of people that are like have been kept down. I am. I'm just going to come out and say it. I am that I old am, lady. But I don't want it. But not in a sucky way. Yeah, I don't want it to seem... I mean, sometimes people fake. can, yeah, it seems fake and thirsty. Yeah. And I'm like, are you really all about it? Or are you just being that because you have white privilege guilt? You know, yeah, it's like, I getcha. be, be real about it. Don't just sit there and be like, mm. yeah, yeah, I know. Cause like it, it comes across, I, you know, we are not a marginalized group. We no. haven't been. And, uh, so we have no clue how that hits other people when we, right. you know, like, oh, yeah, easy for you to promote me. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Where have you been the last 150 years? Or right, yeah. right. All of a sudden now, yeah, screw yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, I'd i feel the same way. Like yeah. Like if Hitler I, came back, I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Where no. were you when I needed you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you don't like me to get political, but <laughs> I do, do kind of think there's a Let's new Hitler. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? Yay. We've got a phone call. Hello. How are you? Hi. The podcast on or are you guys done? We're still on. We're still on. That's Hi. Megan. Hi. Robin Hi. Siegel Lakin. Hey. Hi. How are you? We're doing great. Meet Megan. Hi, Robin. How are you? <laughs> I'm surviving barely. I have bronchitis. Oh, oh no. So, uh, so I'm like a little freaking out. So it's okay. Though. So I, I have to drive to Binghamton, New York. So yeah. I'm a going. Are you, yeah. are, are you headlining? No, I'm Vanessa Holland's head is headlining. The woman who was just on Women of a Certain Age. <gasps> uh, funny Women of a Certain Age on the trans director on Showtime. Yes. Uh, Ooh. Uh, well, Oh my yeah. God! Your Very career's nice your career's what? taken your career's taken off, girl. Yeah, good for you. Well, I, I, hopefully my best set won't be at my funeral. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you went and tried out. My funeral's gonna be at class, like to say my funeral's gonna be a bring your show. Everyone's gotta bring 
I like it. I'm going to do the same. How is Oregon? How is Portland? Let me hear what you guys are up to. It's like 70 degrees out today. Sunny, well, cloudy in the distance. Yeah, it's pretty. It's nice. Yeah. I think... Oh. I'm not from Portland, so... It's like, uh, it's something a mother can love. I mean, I, I get the weirdness of it. Some things I really like, some things I'm like, mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, Megan, where are you from? Megan, where are you from? I am from, God. I, I don't really have, I've, ever since I was 15, Megan. it's, yeah, it Megan. seems like I moved every four years. So it's like the longest I ever lived ah. was Riverside, California. But then we lived in Vegas for four oh. years, and then I joined the army, and then everywhere I lived was for four years. So I came back. I moved here from Texas because my mom lives up in Oregon. Oh, so you were also in the military? Yes, yes. That's why we're sassy. Mm-hmm. We were both uh, veterans. That. Thank you both for your service. Thank sure. You. My father. My father was in the big one, you know, World War II. Uh, so my yeah, a long time ago. Long he was Navy, ago. right? Uh, my, my father was Army. No, Army. Ooh, I was Army, too. So yeah. was Linda. <laughs> what were, rank were you in, Megan? You were in the Army, right, Megan? Yeah. Yeah. Army. Okay. Oh, please. Yeah. So you guys do... Uh, Oh, also, I'm in the Meadowlands Comedy Festival this Sunday. So yes. Kind of a, a Meadowlands Sunday. Yeah, they're doing the state. festival at the Meadowlands. Okay. The Wonderful. Comedy Club. Um, and, yeah, I'm doing a bit uh, uh, set on Sunday for them. So mm -hmm. I have a busy weekend. And Saturday, I get to go watch the Mets play with Jeff. We get to go to City Field and watch our Mets. We'll be Mets fans. Go Mets. So. I love the Mets. <laughs> go Mets. I know. I know. Anyway, girls, I don't want to cut you short, but I, I have bronchitis. Okay. And I'm, I'm on antibiotics. So I'm trying to save my voice for this weekend because it's a big one. Right, right. So I'm so happy to call in. Yay. Like to you do you want to do one more shameless plug? How can we find you? Uh, oh, you can find me. I actually, I'm, I, I, I am so illiterate on the computer. I still don't have a website. Basically, you just have to Facebook friend me. It's Robin Siegel Lakin. Okay. And all my gigs are Facebook and Instagram. I'm Instagram. I'm Lakin Robin. Okay. I, I need to get a website. You know, hopefully, I'll, you know, hopefully, I'll do it before my husband gets my life insurance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah take please. care. I love you, Linda. I love you so much. You're so talented. I'm so proud that you're my friend. I love you. To pieces. I'll be back to New York. I'm bringing Megan. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, It'll be great. We have our show Wednesday, May 1st at the Broadway Comedy Club. Nancy Levine and I produce a show called Unlicensed. It's also a podcast on Apple iTunes, if anyone's interested. Oh, okay. Unlicensed. Great. It's pretty funny. We'll, we'll, Megan will put that on there. Yeah, I will. Love and hugs. Love, Love and hugs. hugs. I'll go subscribe Love to yours. Yes. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Almost everybody that said they'll call in has called in. Nice. That's three out of four. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't count them down. <laughs> what if they don't call? We'll talk shit. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Kevin's my friend. Oh, buddy. no. Not talk shit about the people that don't call in. Just talk shit when to fill in the gaps. Yes. yes. Oh, what about your Portland News segment? I've got some news for you guys. I do. I've been out walking around. I was out sick. Fortunately, I dodged a bullet. I've been dodging more bullets in my life lately than I did when I was in the Army. Right. <laughs> I only dodged one bullet in the military. Nice. Yeah, that was when the instructor was cleaning his weapon and it misfired. That's the only time I had to dodge a bullet. What? Yeah, I have hearing difficulty in this year because of it. Huh. Yeah. He was cleaning his weapon, didn't know there was uh, a bullet in the round or something like that. So I almost caused an international incident in Germany because the gun misfired and went 
from one floor of the building where military was at down into the next floor where there were German civilians. It's like, okay, that's war. <laughs> so, yeah. He didn't clear the weapon? No. No. Oh, my God. What a ding dong. <laughs> oh, my God. They're, I don't know, maybe they didn't check as much, but, I mean, when you go to the range from like when I was in I mean they like make you clear your weapon like four times you know when in doubt clear your weapon all the time point it up and down range or point it to the ground and uh you know you got to like open up your little TA50 belt and they're like no brass no ammo <laughs> and yeah it's crazy so it's like but I don't because you were in during the 70s yes 73 to 76 yeah so I'm not sure if they did that back then or doesn't sound familiar yeah 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 they were really like maybe a lot of people got shot i mean to be honest i had to do a convoy live fire exercise in korea mm -hmm. and we had live ammo not blanks you wow. know to make for make-believe we had live ammo i felt nervous yeah because i was afraid one of the idiots i was on with the squad mm -hmm. i i I'm like these idiots are gonna shoot me i'm i know i've got sappy plates on <laughs> and it was hot Ugh. korea I love the country. It's a great country, but um, it's like winter time, snow mm -hmm. up to your eyeballs, and then the summer, it's like you drip sweat from places you didn't know you had sweat glands, and wow. it's not pretty. No, okay. no, no, no. I see why there was a war there. I mean, the weather was so crazy. It, it was mad. I, I wanted to punch somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh weather will make you insane. <laughs> it does. It does. I really, I, I never want to make fun of the homeless, but I I would literally, if I spent one cold night, one cold night yeah. outside in the freezing weather, I would go nuts. Yeah, yeah. I would be talking to thin air. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I get it. Like, yeah. I, I don't think it's funny that human beings are out in the elements. Right. Not a bit, but. I kind of wanted, I was thinking about doing like a little documentary kind of thing in Tent City. Mm-hmm. And yeah. just to see if I, I could even make it 24 hours, you know, with like no money, no food, no nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And like, see. We should all go live a, a day in somebody else's shoes. You can't do it, Linda. You don't think no, so? No, just stay home. <laughs> I, I was like, I was thinking of like asking somebody to come with me. Well, also for safety. I know somebody that wants to do it. My roommate. I sh I'm not praying her. She's from Vietnam. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> she could do it. I no, no, because I also need somebody to run a camera and all that kind of stuff. So fine. yeah, I'll let you buy. I think I need a dude. Yeah, a big, big dude. Yeah, yeah, like Pedro Andrade, Andrew Christensen. Who else could we plug? Oh Some yeah, yeah, Andrew. Andrew. He could go in his Trump outfit. No, no, <laughs> get us murdered. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I was walking around trying to increase my energy from feeling sick. Yeah. So I went into... That's another reason why you don't need to go to Tent City with me. You just got <laughs> out of the hospital. Thank I'm not you. trying to send you back in there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. So um, I was walking around and then I said, oh, it said Pendleton on this store down by Pioneer uh -huh. Square. And I said... I'm going to go in and badger those people, you know, that are getting six, ten dollars an hour, whatever it is. Yeah. And so I started asking every single question I could. There was a T-shirt inside of Pendleton and it said, Surf Pendleton. Of course, your homegirl had to ask, like, OK, what's up with this shirt? Surf right, right. Pendleton? Because Pendleton is wool, wool shirts. From like it's a tribal. Is it plads. Pendleton, San Diego? Pendleton woolen mills from Pendleton, Oregon. So like, the indigenous people originally made plaids and right. blankets, and it's turned into shirts, and now it's a whole line of everything, pillows, you name it. Right, right. So surf Pendleton, what in the world? And turns out I did not know this till I went in. There, when surfing first started. People would cover their entire bodies with Vaseline to protect themselves from in the cold and the wet and then put on wool shirts and go surfing. And so I said, okay, so did they wear any of your shirts? No, no. But so that's why they have this shirt called Surf Pendleton. And then I saw in the other side of the store from that shirt, I saw another shirt with signs all around it. And it's the original shirt that the Beach Boys wore in their first album. Yeah. 
and it's called the board shirt. Uh-huh. And evidently, the the Beach Boys were not the Beach Boys to begin with. They were the Pendletons. Huh. And that was their first shirt. I did not know that. That's crazy. Crazy. Didn't like, what was it? Brian Wilson? Yeah. Didn't, wasn't he like BFS with Charles Manson? I don't know. Yeah. Call in now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then I went to the airport to say goodbye to my sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was here for two days and gone and two days back. But uh, when I was at the airport, we went into the Nike store. So I'm, I only talk to people usually long enough to find a joke, really, right. you know, if I'm honest. I'm a, I'm a classic bitch. I'm just like, I'll talk to you, tell me something, and then I leave with a possible joke. So I was in the joke Nike raper. Store. I know. <laughs> Conversational joke raper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so like bad. I'm the opposite of the grim reaper. I'm a joke reaper. There something. you go. There you go. So they're talking about Nike this, Nike that. And I, yeah. And uh, it turns out like uh, there's really nothing new being put out there by Nike. They, I asked what could I promote for yeah, yeah. Nike. Um, they didn't offer me a new pair of shoes to do this. So Well, then don't talk about Nike. You know, but it was fun being in there. Oh, there is one new thing. If you download the Nike app, you'll get 10% extra off, and your app will tell you. Did they you, pay you to say that? No. Well, then don't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Scratch that. Can we edit this? <laughs> <laughs> And I refused, I refused to talk about Columbia Sportswear until Miss Boyle gets a hold of me. Because I want to be with Gertrude Boyle in a picture before one of us kicks the bucket. I'm not saying Who's she's that? old or I'm old. I'm just saying. Who's Gertrude that? Boyle and her son run Columbia Sportswear. She's a Portland person. Okay. And a Holocaust survivor. So oh, I have to meet wow. Her. It's my daddy. He survived the Holocaust you know, yeah. in southern Florida. Where'd the accent come from? I don't know. I'm supposed to be doing German right now, but. Yeah. Or Yiddish. Anyway, yeah. I got to meet Gertrude Boyle before nice. one of us. I didn't know that. That's a whole Portland thing. I like uh, North Face. I'm more of a North Face yes. person. Lately, I've been more South Face. My <laughs> I think my mom likes uh, Patagonia. I love that store. Yeah. They had a line of people waiting to get in there the other day. I have no idea why. Sale, maybe? Yeah. Maybe a big old sale? That would be it. Oh, could be, because it's summer, so maybe they're getting geared up to dump their stuff and get summer stuff in, maybe? Makes total sense. Well, yeah, because Patagonia is more like uh, active, outdoorsy kind of Things that I don't really like, like, yeah, let's go camping and fishing and rolling around in the dirt and sleeping outside under the stars. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't sound fun to me. I mean, if no. there was an RV there, <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. And that RV better have some Wi-Fi. Because <laughs> <laughs> we got Game of Thrones to keep up with. <laughs> right? Yeah. How is Game of Thrones going? It's going good. I'm I'm depressed, though, because it's about, this is the last season. Yeah. And then it's going to be done. Ugh. It's going to be done. Can't somebody come along and salvage, like, Game of Thrones 2? Or? Well, there is going to be prequels, but mm. I'm nervous about that, too, because the Star Wars prequels were cringy. I mean, it, they were equally good as they were bad. Like, mm -hmm. you had Jar Jar Binks, which was horribly racist. But then, and then you've got the weird, like, um, oh, what was his name? Anakin Skywalker and uh, Padme or Ami, Queen Amidala's weird little love affair. And it answered questions. It was like, okay, that's Luke and, you know, Leia's mom and dad. And... How did that happen? And how did it get together? And how did the empire become the empire? And all that kind of stuff. And how did the em uh, was it the emperor become the emperor? It answered a lot of cool questions, but good lord, they were cringy. So what's cringy? Like ooh. okay, cringe. We're cringe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're just cringing. We're just ooh. So I'm hoping they do it justice. Yeah. We'll see. So how is Game of Thrones that you watch different from the Game of Thrones that you play a game? <laughs> what am I? Is this the difference between a movie and a book? Um, what is it? Can you explain that to multi, an old person? I think it's like a multiplayer game. It's like uh, 
it's got a social, it's kind of like Farmville, just more violent. And um, you have to kind of cooperate with other people to get to a larger goal or whatever. See, that's cool. That takes like the movie and makes it life, like real interactive. Well, kind of. I mean, we just fight with the, I like it for the drama aspect. I really, I mean, and I'm no different because I was getting mad because somebody took my SOP. I was like, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I was like actually super mad about it. But I'd been fighting with that dude during uh, player versus player and he tried to take my stuff and then I fought him and killed off all my troops. And then I fought another person in his alliance and killed off all my troops. So I did just like let him take the SOP. I was just like. But Do you think he could be watching right now? And if he was, what would you want to say to him? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that SOP back, dick. <laughs> Don't mess with my Megan. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> I'm getting it back. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to punk you out on Kingdom Chat, too. <laughs> yeah. That was like. That's what really made me mad. Like during player versus player, mm -hmm. you you do attack each other because you get points for it. Okay, that's fine. I get it. He took my. It's called the Cedo Power SOP for non Game of Thrones conquest players, and uh, the Cedo Power is kind of like uh, what Moat Kalen. But you, if you don't know what these places are, then you know you have to watch Game of Thrones. If you're not a Game of Thrones person or a video game nerd then you're probably just gonna want to like take a nap for five seconds <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so like it's like moat kaylin or winterfell or you know all this uh key places that were in game of thrones those are called seat of powers and then we just call them sops because we're lazy and we call kingdom chat kc and we call alliance chat ac okay and um so this douche bomb took my SOP and like kicked me out of it like by attacking it and uh, I had to pull back because he was pretty powerful. And if he just would have left it because he wanted the points, I would have been fine. Oh no, he posted the coordinates of that SOP in Kingdom Chat saying free SOP and then if you click on the coordinates, it would take you there and then all you have to do is teleport there and take the SOP. I was like, that's a dick move. So, of course, I went on KC and started talking shit back. And, yeah, now it's a war. And he's forever on my shit list. Cool. <laughs> he's going to be sorry. I would not want to mess with you. I do not want to piss off Megan. Well, he's in, a, he's in a good spot, this other player, because I don't have any troops right now. But after this weekend, watch your ass, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Like in, in uh, the world outside of Game of Thrones, because mm -hmm. I don't want to say in the real world, because this is part of the real world. Mm -hmm. But in the world outside of Game of Thrones, um, have you ever had like alliances and uh, people dicking around with you to this degree? Or is this like th the best there is, the most kinked up? that's going like like in, in high real school life? yeah like in oh high like school. bullies <laughs> i dare you i dare you <laughs> no that's why and honestly i don't you know growing up in riverside you're gonna learn real quick to either like kill or be killed and um first fight i got into was with a little boy he tried to take cut cuts in front of the bus line and back in the day I used to say no cuts no butts no coconuts and I elbowed him, and then he elbowed me back, and then we were just like in a full-on scuffle. And I remember my teacher, Mr. Bushman, he came up and put his hands on our shoulders. He's like, what's going on? We're like, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, I will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have to show yeah. that you're not going to put up with that. Right yeah. the, out the gate, or you're in trouble. Yeah. You can't just let people But walk. I don't. See, a lot of people are like, I don't condone violence no fighting well i heard for those of you out there kids fight i mean deal with it i mean you can tell them like don't hit each other you know try not to fight but i mean don't teach your kid to not fight at all you want them to stand up for themselves Ooh, we got a call it's restricted Ooh, who is it maybe it's porn hello hello oh oh somebody 
Maybe it was a sales call. I think it was a sales call. I was hoping it was... Um, Kevin. You know, we don't get... Now, when I was younger, I used to crank call people all the time. Because I'm like sadistic and evil. Me too. And uh, So bad. Yeah. I mean, my friend and I would stay up all night long just saying the most fucked up shit to people. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would call up and say, is my mommy there? So yeah. lame. And you'd laugh. And I laugh. don't remember what we said to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell he was sleeping. <laughs> Just pause for a moment. He's like, I think you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was so funny. And, like, I remember we just cracked up for it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I don't remember what we said, but just the way he said it, I think you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. And uh, yeah, no, you can't do it anymore. You can't crank call people. I guess no. if you did the Wi Fi phone, you could fuck with people. Yeah. But then, I mean, eventually it'll get like tracked back to you. Yeah. So, what I did, here's another thing a way that I can troll on Game of Thrones. Yeah. I have uh, an alternative account. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I'll do all sorts of craziness and like Love go it. attack people and be like, do you want to be my... Actually, I don't want to say that because it'll give me away. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Let's just say I ask people crazy shit. So it's kind of <laughs> like my way of crank calling people. I like it. Yeah, yeah. That's a smart thing to do. Or it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're sick. <laughs> all the times that I prank called people with my twin brother. Yeah. You know, and then one time I got a job at Washington Mutual in the telemarketing department and I was making a call and they go, come on, get on the phone. You can do it. And I, I don't know what to do. I just like, dial and talk. Yeah. Okay. So I said, hey, how are you doing? This is Linda with Washington. I was supposed to sell him a product he probably didn't want, mm -hmm. which I hate that, you know. So I get this guy on the phone, my yeah. first call. And I was like, this is Linda with Washington Mutual. How are you doing today? Uh -huh. Now, I've prank called a million people. This one's legit. And I go, so how are you doing today? And he goes, well, how the hell would you be if it was the first anniversary of your son's death? And I'm like, dang, that's what I get for prank calling. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's like hit me in the gut. I'm like, screw this telemarketing. I... <laughs> Actually, I have it set to, like, do not call, but, I mean, oh. there's this one telemarketer mm -hmm. was trying to sell me, like, glamour shots or something like that. And I, You know how they have those little, like, rebuttals? Yep. You know, like, well, ask this, ask that. And they're like, you know, do you want to do these pictures? I was like, I don't have any money. And they're like, can you ask your mom? I'm like, she's dead. <laughs> like, can you ask your friends? I was like, I just got out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> I love throwing objections and I know. watching them try to overcome and throw another one. She gave up after I said prison. <laughs> I just got out of prison. She's like, okay, got it. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that would be fun. So it, that's, do you like to, are you sadistic like me just to see like how people will react to like dumb stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. I will throw anything. I'll throw myself under the bus. I'll yeah. say anything to get people to laugh or yeah, see yeah. how they'll react. But not, I mean, like not to where I'm picking on them. Right. But like on the language or the day or the city or the government, you know. Yeah, yeah. I do go political. <laughs> I'm throwing out the political rule. We're going to do political. You want to do political? We never heard anything back on anything we've said. I think we should. Well, I mean, we still only have 46 subscribers. I mean, <laughs> once you get to 100 thou, then, you know, you might be like, eh. We might get new subscribers if we do political more. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't want to do it. I'm like, well, now that you want to do it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> no, it's like, I don't like him. But I'm like, I, I, I haven't seen the things that were so good. Like, okay, maybe he met up with Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, mending that relationship. Okay, possibly. It's also a little scary because he's not very eloquent mm -hmm. or diplomatic. I mean, exactly. he's called him Rocket Man. And... He screwed up that song for me. I used to love that song. And love. now every time I hear it, I think of his dumb ass. And I'm like, God damn it. He's taking things out of our vernacular. Yeah. 
And I don't like people messing with my vernacular. <laughs> vernacular. <laughs> yeah, Take I'm just... Ugh. Ugh. So I don't know. But, yeah, we could get quasi-political. People that were Trump supporters aren't Trump supporters anymore. And I think that's I cool. I think some people are. Some people you are. Know, I saw... I like Joe Rogan. Yeah. And I saw uh, one of his uh, podcasts on YouTube, and he said... He heard something really interesting. He said, not all Trump supporters are racist, but all racists are Trump supporters. I was like, that's incredible. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah. 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 I have a vision and I'd really like it to come true. Remember the show Sound of Music? Mm -hmm. And they lined that family up to sing at that Austrian festival and they sang a song. And then they went back, and they were supposed to be called back out to do a number. Mm -hmm. And they were gone. That's what I want to happen to the whole Trump family. That would be awesome. (laughs) And now the Trump family. Yeah. The Trump family. And they're gone forever. Yeah. But not dead. Just out of sight, out of mind. Well, here's one thing I do like about the Trump family Mm -hmm. is that I used to get a lot of shit for being uh supportive of bush mm-hmm. i'm like he's not a bad guy he isn't and he did great things for the soldiers you know he like did. the post 9 11 gi bill and all that good stuff and they're like he sucks he, weapons of mass destruction i'm like look intel was kind of hinky back then because up until september 11th there was constant threats all the time all the time and we were yeah. just like living the good life for so long like yeah you didn't want to do nothing <laughs> yeah yeah and then it was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. And they've been telling us this for 10 years. I guess we better listen up, y'all, you know. And uh, I, I don't think anything bad. It wasn't a war for oil. And um, well, maybe like, maybe, I don't know. It quasi could be. But if it really was a war for oil, we would have went to war with Saudi, which we would have lost anyway. Totally. And that's why people were like, that was, that's why it was a war for oil. I'm like, eh. Maybe, but I mean, it's not for him, you know, it'd be like, cause we are so like fossil fuel dependent, which needs to go away. I mean, we have all this cool technology. Why don't we use it? There I want to fly go. around in a fucking car. I want to fly to London so I can stalk Tom Hiddleston every day. Like, hello, love. Have wanna- you missed me? <laughs> I want to be able to go to Hawaii without flying. Well, you got it. Fly. The car, the car flies though. You have yes. to, but then you're gonna be flying. I know. I probably can fly now. I'm becoming invincible. I'm dodging bullets. Dodging bullets left and right. <laughs> left Call and back. Right. Call back. <laughs> Speaking of calling back, I think we should segue into closing out. I think that's a great place for it. Right All here, right. right here, folks. All right. Yep. I'm Megan Rogers. And I'm Linda Marcus Smith. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like notification button, and comment below, and hit everything else. And you can troll me. I don't even care. Follow me. Follow us. Follow us. On our social media. Down the street. Down the street. (laughs) Just follow. To the McDonald's, to Harvey's Comedy Club, and come and get some Tabasco. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty Christmas colors all year long. All year long. It's Christmas. (laughs) God bless America. Okay. Come on down to Harvey. Come on down, y'all. George so, Perez. That's right. Jason Acevedo. Yes. And Danny Zamudio. Danny Zamudio. Yay. Woo. Come see them. And say goodnight, Linda. Good night. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>